Electrician Live with your host, Paul Abernathy and Jay Grunberg. Well, hey, everybody. Welcome to another episode of Electrician Live. My name is Paul Abernathy, and with me, as usual, we have... Jay Grunberg. What's up? What's up, everybody? Hey, welcome to the show. And again, tonight's episode is going to be about a very popular topic that gets brought up an awful lot and... Many people get uh, confused by it, and, and I already will say something, Jay. I always will say I'm already having technical difficulty. What do you think? Is yep. it? Is it? It's. I'm already having difficulties with the show. What do you with think? The show already. <laughs> already having difficulties. Already, it, one of our features that allows us to see the chatters is not working. That's not acceptable. Is it? No, no, because they're going to have probably quite a bit of questions tonight on GFCI, so. Okay, so we're going to see if I can add that real quick on the fly. On the fly. Sure. Man, what a week. You know, these short weeks, when when you have like a four, when you have a three-day weekend and you roll into the week and you're starting Tuesday and two day Tuesday is your normal Monday, Mm -hmm. they just, you're trying to cram so much into into such a short period of time it just it, it just almost is like overwhelming so oh, yeah. i know you guys out there probably probably feel the same way just just a lot going on in such a little bit of time you got to hit deadlines you got to start new projects it's just a lot going on man it's a lot it's a lot so you get crammed down and bogged down so yeah, but we're going to talk about something tonight, Jay, and again, we'll, I'll work as I'm going to show. Again, for those that are over in the podcast, so you're listening over on electricianlive.com, you can obviously watch the video as well, but also we have the podcast, you can be listening as well. If you're listening to that, then again, you can come over and watch the video if you want, or you can stick with the podcast and... Stay and listen to us. I know we have these these voices that are just great to listen to. But if you want, you can come on over and join us over on the video. What do you think? Yeah, I, I love the videos to, to interact. And then I like listening to the podcast throughout the week. So, Oh, yeah. So it's one of those things where, again, we're going to talk all kinds of topics. And it looks like I've got it going. So, uh Problem averted, problem averted, solved it on the say, fly. Man? We are electricians of... and magicians. Yeah, that's, yeah. Uh, that's how it is. Elec- ele- uh, what is it? A magician. Get magician. it? Magic, electric, magician. We're magicians, but it already has all that in there. Magician, electrician, whatever. Anywho, what's the topic tonight, Jake? We got, we got GFCIs. GFCIs. Well, what GFCIs. can we talk about GFCIs at? We don't already know. I mean, what can we talk? Can we, I guess there's a, actually a lot that people don't know about GFCIs. So we're going to yeah. get into all that in tonight's episode. We're even going to look at the code a little bit. So we're going to be looking at the 2020. But I guess before I even get involved in that, Jay, I guess we need to uh, remind people about the sponsor, which is electricianpride.com. For those that are watching the video... It's right below me. You can see it. Now, the chat's below Jay, but below me, the most important stuff's below Jay. But for me, below me on the screen is electricianpride.com. So we're going to run that commercial, and then we're going to jump into GFCIs and have some good discussions. And I think Jay's got some good uh, uh, topics or stories he wants to tell tonight. So let's get to this bean footage, and then we'll, uh, we'll get it back. For those that are listening over on the podcast... Again, visit electricianpride.com for all your shirts, muggies, hoodies, stickers, bags, shirts, all the good stuff, all that kind of stuff. So anyway, let me run this and then we'll get into it. Today's show is sponsored by electricianpride.com, your one-stop shop for electrician-specific t-shirts, hoodies, phone cases, mugs, die-cut stickers, leggings, and so much more. 
featuring unique designs for electricians, journeymen, and master electricians, as well as electrical engineers and electrical inspectors. For more information on all the products that are available, visit us at www.electricianpride.com today. All right. Out of the way. Electrician pride. Out of the way. All right. So, so Jake, you're in Colorado, so y'all are in the 2020. Uh, I'm in Texas. We're in the 2017. We'll, we'll be fully into the 2020 as of November 1st. Mm-hmm. So we'll be in it. Y'all already in it. I know Massachusetts is, is in the uh, 2020 already. Um, and I would expect on the, in the next, I don't know, in the next six months, we're going to have a rapidly a number of uh, uh, different states that are going to be jumping on that 2020 bandwagon. And, uh, oh, I should mention, for all of you out there that want to get spoon-fed, all of the 2020 changes, not so that you're kind of drinking from the water fountain or the fire hose, but you want to kind of take sips. We do have that newsletter that is available. Every month we send out a newsletter. You have to subscribe to it. And, uh, again, I think it's $14.95 an issue or $159, and you get the whole 12 months. Here's the thing. We already started in what's called um, volume two now, and there's 12 issues in each volume. If you join the newsletter now, you get access, you'll get all of the previous. So you really get more than 12 issues. You get the 12 from the previous year and you'll get one each month for this year. So ultimately for the one price, you're actually getting more than 12 issues. You're actually getting 24 issues uh, at the end of this, at the end of the day. Yeah. So it's a good deal. All of those will be put together in a book at the end and King Royal Publishing will have the rights to the book, but I have all the rights to what I write up until that point. So if you're interested in the code changes, there you go. That's a that's a way place to go. Okay. Is that where um, you can get the the court the breakdown from the beginning and the process too? Is that what you're referring to? Yeah. Well, like, on the YouTube channel, we obviously have the joint the paid area where you can get in and, and actually see it uh, article by article as we go through. We just finished two fifteen. Um, this is the newsletter that just talks about the changes directly. So it's less about lessons and more about this is what's changed. And so each, each month I cover, cover about three to, to five uh, articles in each unit. And we're just kind of moving through it. So right now I think in that series, uh, I think we're up in the 400s. I think we just finished 404 for switches, the changes. And I think next is 406. That'll be the next month's episode. We'll probably cover all of those. So, again, we, we've moved through all of them. So it really is a, 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 a taking bites out of it is what that is, that newsletter series is. Okay, right. so if anybody's interested, check it out. It's under the services tab on our masterthenec.com website. All right. All right, so Jay, what we're going to do is let's go on and jump into it. You've got your code book handy. Um, you can't see what's on the screen, but the users, unless, of course, you have a browser open, then you could see what we're doing. But let's go on and jump to a browser. And uh, actually, that's not the browser I want. Sorry about that. That is the browser I want right there. Okay. So we're looking at the National Electrical Code, and we're just kind of going to start out at... Uh, well, GFCIs that are fall under 210.8. And, of course, it's broken down to A, B, C, D, all those type of dental lists. And we'll kind of go over those pretty quickly to kind of give you an idea. And, and Jay has any real-life stories he wants to chime in with. You know, Jay, bring them, and we'll discuss them. And, and those happenings now. Code up, fellas. <laughs> so GFCIs have been around for many, many, many years, since the 60s. And they've been through different iterations, you might want to say, different changes. Uh, if we were doing computer software, we'd say different updates, different versions. But, again, right. quite a few with GFCIs. And they've gotten to the point where they're extremely reliable. Um, I will tell you, next week's show, Jay, I don't want to be a, I don't want to be a, 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 what do you call it? What do you say? A teaser? And you, and you tease about a next week's show? Yeah. Right? Yep. But I, but um, let's 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 tease about next week's show. Next week's show is going to be on sometimes controversial topic. 
No, I'm just kidding. We're not going to tell you. <laughs> you got to go to the website and read it. I was just teasing you. So you got to go to electricianlive.com. You, that's where you go to see the schedule for what's coming up next week. <laughs> I'll let you go look at it. Okay. Look at that. I hate doing that to everybody. Yeah. But I did it. But I did Everybody's it. all sitting on the seat of their pants. What's I going know. They're, they're, they're like, what? What's it going to be next week? All right. So. We're going to talk GFCIs. Again, they've been around for quite a few years now, obviously over 40 years or more, uh, and they're very reliable. So, again, we're going to talk about some of the applications in use, and then I'm the Codesy guy. Uh, Jay will bring up applications and, and different, talk different things that I can talk about and, and chime in and, and some questions he might have that you might have. And, of course, if you have questions, again, you can post them in the chat area. Jay will be monitoring that, and, uh, and I will just kind of we'll answer them as we go. We hope Jay will be monitoring that. If Jay's not monitoring that, I will be monitoring that. Okay. <laughs> what well, Caleb said, that's sparky <laughs> porn. No. No, it's. No. Hey, listen, that, that, that only is from, good Only from porn, Caleb. Though. Okay. Only hey. from Caleb. I'm just saying. Way to go, All right. Caleb. All right. All right. So. Let's talk GFCI. Now, you notice that 210.8 in the National Electrical Code, and we'll, we'll talk practical rather than those people that say, Paul, they just don't talk code all the time. Um, 210.8 is the overriding, what we call sometimes the charging or the gives a direction for everything that follows. So 210.8, ground fault circuit interrupter, protection for personnel, as opposed to things like GFI or GFPE, which are more equipment protective driven, this is for personnel. This is to save lives. So this is that thing where we see in the code where it says, okay, when is a GFCI supposed to trip, Jay? It, it's supposed to trip at anything that is six and greater, and, any, and it doesn't trip for anything that's four or less. Where do we get the five? It's because five is the nominal, five is the bridge point, and when it gets to five, it's over four. It starts identifying it, and then... It'll trip. But if you go look at the definition, it literally says not to trip four and less and to trip in six and more. So we just call it a five milliamp nominal. It's right there in the middle. Okay. So they are designed to protect personnel. Now, they come in different classes. Okay. Uh, sometimes we refer to them as, as types or or classes, so you have a class A GFCI, you have a class B GFCI. Incidentally, you have a C, D, E, but they're different classes for different uses. But the class A is what we typically will see, and that is the five milliamps, or like we like to say, four to six range. Um, and then, of course, you got the type two or class two, however you want to call it. Uh, that's typically, depending on the manufacturer, that's 20 milliamps and greater. So that is not going to protect human life, that's designed to also protect equipment, things like that, things that are connected to it as well, okay? Now, inadvertently, it probably might save your life, um, but again, that's not its driving force. The normal Class A's, that is to save the life. That's what you have in your kitchens. That's what you have in your bathrooms, Jay. That's what you have in your, your basements, basement king. Um, it's what you have in outside locations, all that kind of stuff. So we'll kind of go through this, and Jay, feel free to chime in anytime. Um, so 210.8 GFCI. Yep. Ground fault circuit interrupt protection for personnel shall be provided as required in 210.8A through E. Okay. The ground fault circuit interrupter shall be installed in a readily accessible location. Okay. Before we even get into this, there's tons of people that say, Paul, what is exactly readily accessible location? It's a location that allows me to reach it without climbing over or climbing under or having to use ladders or anything like that to get to it. It has to be sure. readily accessible. And, of course, we have a definition of that all the way back in um, Article 100. So, again, pretty but, you know, straightforward. So, so with that, though, because... Obviously, on the commercial side, I've, I've done a little bit of commercial. And up, up on the rooftop, you have a, a rooftop unit in RTU. Um, and you're supposed to have or you're required to have a receptacle, a GFCI receptacle within, I believe, it's 25 feet of that unit. That's correct. Obviously, I have to climb up a ladder. I'm not Superman. I'm not flying up there. I'm not, you know, jumping on a super high trampoline. Super, super can get there. Super 
man. Out aloud. I need I need to take that course. Yeah. So I've got it. It's 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 on our, <laughs> it's on our website. <laughs> Uh, it's a gravity, so awesome. de- gravity defying electrician. It's a secret handed down by many generations of electrical senseis. <laughs> for, for, <laughs> whatever. Okay. First taught by Bruce Lee when he decided That's he didn't right. want to be an electrician anymore. Then he's just going to start kicking people's butt. All right. So, um, so in your question, the requirement for yep. that is to be accessible from the equipment. So the 25 feet, the, the, it is readily accessible to those that need access from the equipment that they'll be working on that they need to plug the extension cord into. It does not have to be accessible from grade. It is accessible from the level of the piece of equipment. So, again, wouldn't be required to, to do that. In fact, it'd be pretty darn hard to do that if you had a, 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 a rooftop I mean, you obviously can get to it. I mean, you got to get to the rooftop. They put equipment there. You got to get to there to service it. But again, the receptacle there is going to be accessible to that piece of equipment from that value. At so, that level, at the that, level that you're at. So if I'm in a crawl space and I jump down in the crawl space or maybe into an attic, even though I know they're not required in attics, let's just stick, I guess, to crawl spaces. But when I'm on that level, as long as I don't have to use a ladder to get to it, or I'm crawling around obstacles, I'm okay. Leave it to Jay, 16 minutes into it, to already talk about topics that we're going to be talking about later oh, in the show. Then, then, no, then leave it to Jay. It. Ask all the questions that we're going to be discussing <laughs> in the episode up front before we even get into the episode. <laughs> Sorry, hey. Jay. Hey, hey, you got all these questions, man. It's just, I know. He, was just, he was bubbling over with questions that he wanted to That's ask. Right. That's All right. right, so over on the podcast, we'll assume that you're following along with your code book. Jay's following along with his, and you out there watching on the videos, which you all could come over and watch over at youtube.com forward slash master the NEC, and you could watch it live. It is, we're looking at 210.8. Okay, so readily accessible location. All right, um, now it says for the purpose of this section, and this section being 210.8, it says when determining the distance. From receptacles, the distance shall be measured as the shortest path the supply cord of an appliance connected to the receptacle would follow without piercing a floor, wall, ceiling, or fixed barrier, or shortest path without passing through a window. Now, it used to say door or doorway, uh, but it doesn't say that anymore. So that does not break the measurement anymore. Okay? So... Uh, the, the 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 reason I bring that up is because let's say you had a bathroom, and in, it's right next to your bedroom, and you have a receptacle that's just on the inside wall in the bedroom, but as you'll see in a minute, if it is within six feet of the top inside edge of that sink, then it's going to require it to be GFCI protected. Yeah, it's in the it's over in the uh, bedroom, but. It is within six feet of the top inside edge of the sink. So if their previous code, if there was a door there or there was a doorway, then it would be like an imaginary break and you wouldn't continue the measurement. But since that's gone now in the uh, 2020, then you would measure it. And so that would require that receptacle just inside the bedroom. If it's within six feet, um, as a cord would fly, would go, then it's going to be GFCI protected. Okay. Um, some people don't like that, but that's the, the way it is. When you remove that doorway as a breaking point to that measurement, then that's how you'd have to measure it, okay? And that's important because we need that when we look at each of these other things that we're going to go over really, really quickly because we got a lot to co- cover in a topic in this episode. So, uh, so Jay, again, yell out there anytime as we get into this. All right, 210.8A dwelling units, all 125 volt through 250 volt receptacles installed in the location specified in 210.8A1 through A11. Okay, so we've added, again, some additional ones here than it was in the previous edition. And supplied by a single phase brand circuit rated 150 volts or less to ground, shall have ground fault circuit interrupter protection for personnel. Okay, now interesting here. This is talking about what? Single phase branch circuits. Okay. 
we're talking dwelling units. Typically, they're going to be single phase anyway. But we're talking, so it's 125 volt through 250 volt receptacles. Okay. Yep. So that's, uh, uh, incidentally, when you see something that says 120, you know they're talking brand circuit. When you see something that says 240, you know you're talking brand circuit. When you, when you see something that says 125, you know they're talking device. You see, see 250, they're talking device because those are NEMA ratings. All right. All right. So first one, bathrooms. Okay. All receptacles in a bathroom have to be GFCI protected. Now, incidentally, really not this topic, Jay, but I could have a 20 amp circuit in the bathroom that serves the requirements in 210.11 for the bathroom, but I could also have a 15 amp circuit in there as well. People think all the time, like, oh, I can only have 20s in a bathroom. That's not true. The 20 amp circuit supplies the requirement of the code, the receptacle that serves the basin within three feet, that, okay? But could I have additional receptacles in there? Absolutely. 15 amp circuit, you know, dedicated circuit for a 15 amp receptacle is perfectly fine. Still has to be GFCI, but can it be there and not have to be a 20 amp circuit, the additional circuit that's in a bathroom? Absolutely. But this is talking about overall, any of them in there would have to be GFCI protected. Um, next, garages and accessory buildings that have a floor located at or below grade. So if you access it from grade or the flooring is where you go in and it's down below grade. So anything at grade or less, then it's going to be a GFCI protection on that, okay? And it also says not intended for habitable room and limited to storage areas, work areas, and areas of similar use, okay? So garages, accessory buildings, again, are located at or below floor level, and it's not to be used as a habitable room. It's not to be used. Uh, it's it's going to be limited to storage area, work area, and areas of similar use. Then that's going to require uh, the, uh, and, I, and you know what? Yeah, I want to make sure I didn't say that because I'm not talking about crawl spaces yet. So this garages and accessory buildings at or below grade GFCI protection. That's that, that's kind of a big one for us. When I look at garages and I see the code saying through 250 volts, to me now, I have to be careful when I'm running that circuit and how I'm protecting that circuit for, let's say, a um, Tesla charger. Mm -hmm. Or maybe someone wants to put a welder out there. Yeah, because the because the voltage the, the the actual amp value is gone. That disappeared. It used to be fifteen twenty amps. Right. Yeah. So that's gone. That's gone now. So you don't have you don't have that in there to be that trigger anymore. Okay. So this is going to be very impactful. Um, and and also it's going to be um, maybe I have a I don't know maybe I put a, a washing machine out there or maybe I even put a, a dryer out there. It, at that point, it's still a, 20, a 250 volt receptacle, right? So it's 240 volt branch circuit, 250 volt receptacle. That is going to require GFCI protection. So it's going to impact what you put different appliances in different locations. You know what I'm saying? It's going to impact it. Uh, next is outdoors. Obviously, outdoors, you're going to have all uh, 125 volt through 250 volt receptacles. Now, again, doesn't matter about the amp rating. It's all going to be uh, GFCI protected. Uh, now, incidentally, Jay, you can protect it at a breaker or you can protect it at the device. It doesn't really matter. It's all about it being protected before you plug something into it. Remember, this is all about receptacles. So people ask, does it got to be, you're not trying to protect the circuit. We'll let AFCIs pick that up, and that might even be um, next week's topic. I'm not sure. It may be, it may not. I don't know. Just, I don't know. But anyway, that's going to protect the circuit. Um, what we're looking at is what might plug into it, or if something's hardwired to it, you'll see here in a little bit later that you'll have want to have a discussion on but we're, we're, what we're doing here is all outdoors have to be plowed when it comes to reception. Now, there is an exception to the rule. Exception to three, and it only exception only applies to three, says receptacles that are not readily accessible and are supplied by a brand circuit dedicated to electric snow melting, de-icing or pipeline or vessel heating equipment shall be permitted to be installed in accordance with 426.28 and 427.28. 
uh, 22. Uh, long and short is this allows you to, in many cases, they're going to want GFI protection, which is going to be the 20 milliamps or greater aspect of it. This is basically saying, okay, but again, they're up there. They're not readily accessible. And the whole purpose of readily accessible is to be able to test it on a frequent basis. I know we all do. I know you're going to run out after this show and go test all your GFCIs because you do that every month. I know diligently. Yeah. We all do that, right? Yep. Um, you know, Make sure but, you test your neighbors too. Yeah, to test your neighbors. Go Tell run them. over and Watch test them. your neighbors. Yeah. So um, there is an exception for that. Obviously, those uh, up at the eaves and things like that, they're not going to be readily accessible. Okay. And so there's an allowance there. Uh, the next one is crawl spaces at or below grade level. So in crawl spaces, any receptacles that you'd have in a crawl space, whether it's the service receptacle that is also within 25 feet of the actual unit that's being serviced uh, or whatnot, uh, or, or any receptacle, to be honest with you, in a crawl space is uh, at some receptacle. Yep. Yep, because there's no exception for that when it comes to that. Now, again, so when people ask us that all the time, that, and they do ask that. They go, oh, you know, I'm, I'm doing a sump pump down there, and, you know, and I'd say, okay, what's worse? Have it flood, which will eventually it will recede, or you could pump out, or have a receptacle there, and it floods, and now it doesn't trip a breaker or something or, or whatever, and there's no GFCI, and now somebody gets electrocuted, right? I'd much rather pump the water out. I grew up in a house that flooded every time it rained because my mom thought it was a great idea that down on the basement when we were little kids, we had a, a, a kind of an unfinished basement, and that's where we would play. But the water kept coming up through the, the sewer, in the, uh, through the floor drain because the neighborhood didn't adequately size the, their drainage for when it rains. And ultimately what happens is she got tired of it flooding, so what did she do? She filled it with cement. Well, a lot of good that did when the water came in from the walls and now the basement wouldn't drain. So, you know, I grew up with us having to bail it out with buckets until we got bright. And when I was in electrical school, I was like, uh, Mom, why don't we have a sump pump in here? You know, so she's like, she's like, oh, who do we get to put one in? <laughs> okay. So we put one in and never had a problem with that after that. Did, did she ask your brother first or did she come to you? Uh, you know, I, you know, as you know, my brother's an electrician too, and he was a couple years older than me. I think it with us, it was ingrained and in just grabbing the buckets every time it rained. Yeah. <laughs> you know? <laughs> so. Growing up as a kid was rough, man. It was yeah. rough. Yeah. Um, you got some questions in there, uh, Jay, if you want to read oh. them, see what we got. So those yeah, are the me, podcast. Jay will read it. the questions. Yes, sir, I will. Let me get back to it. My phone went blank on me. I, I actually have one for the crawl space, too, before I get to them. Was okay. um, I had a crawl space that was pretty easy to get to. You just kind of hop down there. And, um, mm -hmm. you know, the inspector said, no, I, I want it up top where it's, you know, readily accessible, and I kind of explained to him, I said, well, it's, obviously, it's readily accessible at that level. We weren't, we didn't have to go far. It was, it was very quick to get to. We were, you literally just popped down. It was a sump pump. We went in line side, low sided, you know, and we'll get to it, the lights and everything, but we, we, it was, it was readily accessible from the level. He goes, no, he goes, I want to see it up top, and it needs to be in a certain room. Well, where the where we suggested it was in the room right above where the um, hatch was at because he thought the hatch, you know, lifting up the hatch and dropping down, it wasn't readily accessible. Well, we didn't have to use a tool to get to it, whatnot. So I said, okay. I talked to the homeowner. I said, we're gonna have to put a GFCI here. She says, no, I don't want it in that room. I don't I don't want anything in that room for plugs because they were having benches and and whatnot. It was like a little mud room with seating. And so I said, okay. Well, we can move it let's find a general location. And so it was either in the garage or it was, or we had to protect it by a breaker. Well, the cost of the breaker wasn't in my budget. So I had to go to them with a change order or in the garage, you, you have to label it or make sure someone knows what it is controlling. Because like you said, if that GFCI trips, 
and you don't know where to reset it, if the, if the receptacle right by the sump pump isn't the actual receptacle that you're resetting, now where is this receptacle at? Sure. So sure. we end up we end up putting it in the garage and writing sump pump, um, you know, controls the sump pump, sump pump GFCI. So, so, what's, um, so what's amazing about that is that when you have a unit in a crawl and you're putting a receptacle in there because you have a unit. Now, the unit's going to have probably a disconnect, and you're required to be readily accessible to the disconnects. So even though we have limited space rules that came in the 2020, is you're still going to have your three feet. You're still going to have your clearance in front of it. You're going to have limited height allowances, but it's going to be at least the height of the equipment to get it in there. So you've got readily accessible requirements already in the code. Here you have somebody telling you, I'm not going to let you put a GFCI receptacle down there because it doesn't feel that it's readily accessible. Man, I've got to be readily accessible for all the other <laughs> crap that's down there, but you're telling me that the receptacle is not readily accessible, so you want me to put it on the floor above. Right. Okay. Um, no. Or it's the what if. What if the homeowner doesn't know where it's at? What if? What, it's always the what ifs that I get sometimes with these guys, too, that just, yeah, just so kind that's of a problem. The, the code, me over. The, the code is not a what if code. The code is what's required today. What's required now. Not what was right. required that somebody may do. Okay. Right. It's, or your it's, personal it's, preference. Oh, like yeah, how you that, personally that want it. I, I, I personally want it in this room at this height for this purpose. It's it's it doesn't make sense. But O has a has a question, I believe. It says inspection. I don't know. Has, I looked at O's question. I don't know if it's an actual. The first it's, part. It's I don't just know if a it's statement. Question or a statement? Okay, let me see o where says, I'm at. I, I don't see anything else. O says inspection passed. Uh, although, hold on. By the people over in the podcast, we're reading comments from those that chime in during the actual uh, show. So pop on over and if you're listening to the podcast. Uh, and if actually, if it's a recording at a later date, you know, you can always come and, and watch a later episode of it. We get a lot of people that watch the reruns of the shows. Uh, o says inspection passed home run landed on a receptacle, no GCI. And then from there branched to the entire bathroom to a three gang switch box to vanity, uh, bath light and fan with regular breaker. From my right. So what he did was, Oh, go ahead. No, keep going. Go ahead. My, my understanding from above, everything needs to be protected. So, no, not everything really needs to be protected. What needs to be protected is just the device. Yeah, so um, what's this happening is a receptacle is, requirement. Th yeah, this is a re this is a receptacle requirement. Um, and I said device. I'm sorry. The switches are devices too. So mm -hmm. normally, what we do, oh, in in a in a bathroom application, we bring our home run to the actual light, if at all possible. And this goes for any room that I do. If it's a bedroom, if if it's if, if my lights are sharing with my receptacles, I always try to bring the home run into the light box. Um, but in the bathroom, you bring it to the lights, you you hit your three gang box like you said, and then you bring the power over to your GFCI, and that has to be um, protected with the GFCI. So now I do it a little. I did a little differently because generally I put all of my receptacles in the dwelling on the same GFCI circuit. So the code allows you to do this. You can supply one branch circuit to a bathroom and you can do the lighting and you can do the receptacles all in one room as long as you don't leave that room. You don't go hit another bathroom. If you do it in there, and again, of course, you've got to be careful of your loads and, and things like that, but you, the code allows for that. Or you have your separate, separate lighting, or you can hit your receptacle with the branch circuit for the receptacle, and then loop out of that and go pick up the receptacle in another bathroom somewhere else. And people always go, well, that's going to trip the hairdryer. No, it's not. Unless you've got two teenage girls, and it's 20 amp circuit, and they both want to do their hair at the same time, and they're in two separate rooms, and they got the hairdryer, maybe. But reality is, nah. But if you want to run home runs to each one of them, you can do whatever you want. But again, the code allows you to do that. The key is, if I do the one branch circuit for the lighting and receptacle in a single bathroom, I can't, feed, I can't feed any other bathrooms. That's right. I gotta and normally in, in the basements that we do, they, they normally have just one, usually guest bathroom. There's, there's really mm -hmm. no bathroom off the master suite. You're not um, sharing multiple, because we're not going to go into the existing dwelling and, and bring down... You know, drill, drill up and bring down that existing right. circuit to feed that one, one device. So, like, like uh, Paul was saying, we we just feed that 
um, bathroom with just one 20 amp circuit. Yeah. Yeah. And, 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 and with me, like I said, I used to do the one circuit for the lighting in the bathroom and then the other circuit for my receptacles. And I would loop all my receptacles in my other bathrooms. Usually there's two bathrooms or three bathrooms mainly. Um, only time I had to worry about that is when I did those multi-million dollar houses. And of course there was like six bathrooms. And oh, right. <laughs> so then it was, you know, so the kids have their own bathrooms. Man. Yeah. Every, <laughs> yeah. Well, no, that house was so big, but there was only the man and uh, the man and his wife and their one daughter, but yet they had this huge house. But Hey, if you got it, you got it, you got it. Yeah. So, all right. Anyway, off track. So, off of that one, the next would be the basements. Now, this is uh, obviously the basement king is with us tonight. And, you know, in uh, no relation to Tiger King. Whoa, 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 whoa. Just saying. He's not even in Oklahoma. I'm just saying. All right. So, so <laughs> basements, it used to be in the basements, it was only for unfinished basements. Okay. No, oh, you don't. Um, so, unfinished basements, but 2020 code, total change. All basements. Yep. It doesn't matter whether it's finished or unfinished. Okay? Yep. And O had another question here about uh, Arc Fault. O, I might have news for you that you <laughs> might want to stay around for next week's episode. Yep. So, we don't want to get too much into the topic of arc fault this week because we're going to be talking a lot about that maybe maybe next week jay yeah we, we might might okay might be yeah. on to something might might be i don't know that's the uh, next week and you might even get some of my opinions that have been changed. oh man you're gonna rile up some people man um, okay you're that's next week up. that's next week that's not this week we're okay we're all happy with gfci okay all right, so basements. Now, we have an exception to basements. If you have fire alarm or burglar alarms down there, then they don't have to be on GFCI. Um, kind of weird rule. I wish they'd get rid of it. Uh, most of those have battery backup anyway, so shouldn't be a big deal. It just seems, seems odd that you wouldn't care about a receptacle for a fire alarm or burglar alarm, but yet some pumps and everything else has to be. So, I mean, this is – but anyway, this is what the code is. Um, so in basements, all receptacles now have to be GFCI protected. So if you have a nice finished basement, Jay, and you do a lot of them, yep, I do. You, you have to you you have your GFCI and all the receptacles down there, aren't you? Yeah, and so so what we did before August first was we would just be required to put all the well, most receptacles in the basements would just be art fault protected. Unless they were obviously in the bathroom or the unfinished storage areas, there were there are a couple exceptions in the mechanical room, um, but now we're having to do the dual functions. So we're doing we're, we're no, you don't have to do fault. you don't have to do dual function. I mean, you could you could put the AFCI in the panel and GFCI at the first receptacle. I mean, you can they make the they you know you could as long as you got both. You don't have to get a dual function. No, you don't have to get the dual function breaker, but you have to essentially protect it by the by the two is what I was getting to. You have to sure. protect it by the AFCI and the GFCI. So what we do is is we try to, if at all possible, we do the dual function breakers um, if we have room. Obviously, we put a lot of remote distribution panels down there, and we size that per the basement size. So we, we kind of know what we're going into. Sure. Um, so we'll we'll usually do a function from the from the breaker, but um, yeah, you could you could even do the dual function receptacles receptacles and load side that or like what you said, we could do. Well, the I could put an breakers. AFCI our AFCI in a panel and a GFCI at the first receptacle. At and, the first one, it's and, the the and, only thing with that 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 gets is, is the customer's eye because now you have if they have standard uh, duplex receptacles and you have just that one decora sticking out every so often you know they kind of there go, you go trying to look, on, make so. the make trying to make the work look pretty okay but but again with your with your point with with the supply that we're getting nowadays and the limited supplies that we have at the supply houses you almost have to go to that option or consider that option and at and least you have an option real thing 
Yeah, at least you have an option. You have an option. But we we talked about this a week or two ago. The 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 dual functions are actually pretty coming down in price. So, um, and again, for those that ask, you know, obviously we'll talk maybe more next week. But dual function is it covers both AFCI and GFCI. Um, totally different than combination, which is simply looking for parallel and series arcs for AFCIs. Totally yeah. different thing. Um, you can the dual function will be both a combination. Uh, so it'll have the ability to, to detect arcs, both series and parallel, but also class A GFCI function as well. Okay. One of the big things that I run into, though, with, with that code uh, with basements is I'm not able to, let's say I'm, I need to hit a hallway receptacle and I've already maxed out my um, circuit. Well, what I would call maxed out, I usually keep eight receptacles to a circuit. Ten is a stretch unless it's an amendment. But it's not like you can just hit the switch box and then drop down now to the receptacle you can do that but now you're going from the lights that are just required arc fault to if you hit that receptacle now you have to either put a gfci there or you have to do the dual function breaker so mm -hmm. it, it gets more um you know you have to go in with a with a pretty decent game plan on how you're teaching your guys to wire these basements now so yeah i mean and, if, if you're in a pinch and they come in and you add a receptacle, just remember you're adding a receptacle. So, you know, if you're adding it, the receptacle, then it's going to be, you're going to have to add the GFCI protection to it. And if you're adding it, here's the other thing. If you're adding it from the brand circuit for the lighting, then theoretically you're altering the ACI circuit as well. So you have to be very careful if you're extending to this or extending it, you're not moving, you're actually adding to the brand circuit, you could have a problem. So you just you be aware of all those things. If it's already AFCI, I say that because you might get a, ba a, a basement that was existing and somebody yeah. comes in and now they're adding a receptacle and it was already inspected a couple years ago and now they're adding it and they're dropping it down off that lighting circuit. Well, they're extending that brand circuit, so they might not have had AFCI protection on that uh, lighting circuit because it wasn't required back when they did it. Well, now since you're, oh. you're, see, you're extending that circuit, now it could have been in. There's more involved than what you thought was involved. You right, you're going just into to add next a receptacle. week's. You're, you're you going to touch. You're kind of touching on what we're going to talk about next week too yeah. with the with the AFCI. That's a, that's yep. a good. See, now I'm getting ahead. Okay, let's go back. Let's, let's rewind this thing back. So much. There's so much. So much to talk about. Okay. Next. Kitchens. So, kitchens. People talk about kitchens, kitchen, kitchens. We're not talking. Now, kitchen general. See, you notice that six is kitchens and seven is sinks, Jay? So yes, I do. The sinks is broad throughout the entire dwelling. Kitchens are very specific. So, in the kitchen where the receptacles are installed to serve the countertop services. So all the receptacles that are installed to service that countertop are going to have to be GFCI protected, okay? If it's there to serve the countertop. Interesting enough, I uh, the code will tell us that you're generally, the refrigerator is to be on the small appliance brand circuit. But if yep. the refrigerator's receptacle is behind the refrigerator, and it might be fed from that small appliance brand circuit that's serving the countertop. It doesn't need GFCI protection. And again, if it was behind a refrigerator, then it wouldn't be readily accessible anyway. You'd end up having to put it back in the panel. But most of the time, I typically how my home runs would work is I would feed the receptacle for the refrigerator and then come out of it and hit the first one on the countertop for the countertop and put the GFCI on the countertop right there. So that way the one for the refrigerator is all on the supply side of that GFCI because it didn't need to have GFCI protection. So if the GFCI trips, everything downstream will trip and protected, but I don't need to put that. So that's how I always wired them. Could I put that refrigerator on a GFCI uh, breaker in a panel? And, and sure. Only way that receptacle, only way that that refrigerator is going to trip a GFCI is if there's something wrong with the refrigerator, whether it's the compressor, windings, the motor's going bad, something's going bad, there's leakage, something's going on, then it needs to be looked at anyway. So again, I have people that tell me all the time, oh, I don't want to put my fridge on GFCI, it'll go bad and spoil my meat. And I'm like, well, you can always go get more meat. And again, it is is what it is, but it should not, not in the generation that we are today. Now, every AFCI, by the way, has what's called a metal oxide varistor, and it's kind of like a surge suppression device. So it can only take so many surges, spikes, 
lightning strikes. And again, so that's why GFCIs will fail. And it used to be, and UL 941 is the standard for GFCIs, it used to be they would fail and they would simply work like a regular receptacle, but they'd have no protection. You just would, you'd hit the button and it wouldn't do anything. <laughs> but the standard changed quite a few years ago now. And when that MOV gets damaged, uh, then it's when the, the receptacle malfunctions, it shuts down now. Okay. So again, has been a change in the standard. Again, like I say, constantly evolving. Okay. Yeah. Constantly evolving. So um, wholeheartedly believe in GFCIs because we have data. We're going to be talking next time maybe about data, lack of data thereof, but not for GFCIs. We, we have plenty of data for that. Now, in the kitchen, the other receptacles that are around the wall, maybe even in the dining room, if they're fed from those two small appliance brand circuits, because they have a minimum of two, um, they don't have to be GFCI protected, but they are on that small appliance brand circuit. Okay, But they don't have to be GFCI protected. Okay. Uh, next seven is sinks, any sink. Wet bar sinks, whatnot, anything. Laundry sink, if you got one. It says where receptacles are installed within six feet from the top inside edge of the bowl of the sink. Now, Jay, why do you think that we changed this a couple cycles ago in order to do the measurement from the top inside edge? Why do you think? Probably to give you some kind of point to start with, some specific point that you can draw your measurement from. Right, so bowls that are in the sink, it's pretty easy to measure from top inside edge of the bowl, right? Those bowls, that, those new decorative bowls that sit on the top of the sink, on the counter, that kind of curve up like a big bowl, if you measured it from the thinnest, the, the shallowest part in the base, a receptacle oh. might not be the same distance as if I measures, measured it from the top inside edge. So if we use the top inside edge, then we're, we're, again, you're right, we're consistent with our measurement, whether it's in the actual countertop or it's one of those bowls that are raised above the countertop. Okay? So it's very consistent with our measurement. And again, we learned where we measure uh, at the very beginning of this in 210.8. And again, it's the measurement is the distance measured as the shortest path, the supply cord of an appliance connected to the receptacle would follow without piercing floor, wall, ceiling, or fixed barrier, or shortest path without passing through a window. Okay? So we have a measurement that we can do it, and again, that covers all sinks in a dwelling unit. Um, boat houses, again, receptacles, 125 well, volts or with, 250 volts. With, with, with seven, hold on, before we get to boat, house, boat houses, with, with seven... Um, or actually, and I no, just realized, kitchen, Jay, we're, we're, not even gonna, just, we're not even going to get out of 210.8a because we've just spent way too much time on dwelling units. No, but, we're, we're, we're not. But um, this, is a good, this is a good understanding for those that do residential or, or whatnot. We, uh, we never put the range on, on a GFCI um, never. breaker. We never protected that, that device. But if it's within six feet of, of the sink, because sometimes you have the sink in the island. And you might have a cooktop somewhat close to it, maybe on the back side of it, and it's still within. Again, it's to that that device itself, and the device is pretty low. So the so chances now, of that range to be considered under this um, code article is probably slim to none. But well, you still think, have to of, take think it in. of think of a dwelling unit in a efficiency room, efficiency apartment. Because, again, this is dwelling unit. We're not talking about one and two family alone. This is dwelling units. So this applies to the dwelling units of a multifamily dwelling building as well. So you could have a very efficient kitchen, small efficiency, where the range could be, the receptacle could be within six feet of a sink. Well, yes, this is going to kick in and require it to be GFCI protected now. That's a big and deal. It is a big deal. Um, now, in your case, cooktops, things like that, if they're hardwired, they don't need a receptacle, so this they'd get around right. this. But um, if it was, you're right. If, there were, if This is all very hingent on the uh, receptacle. That's the driving factor here for the receptacles. Um, so boathouses, again, any receptacle in a boathouse. Uh, laundry areas. So other than, you know, the laundry area, is another one that, that came in last cycle. 
And laundry area means now, and, and you kind of take it to what you were talking about, Jay. It used to be it had something to do with the measurement from a sink in a laundry area. That's gone. So any laundry area is designated for laundry area. It's going to require that the receptacles in there be GFCI protected. So that's the receptacle for the washing machine. But more importantly, it now is going to require the receptacle for the dryer if you have a dryer. It's going to have to be GFCI protected because, again, that's 250-volt receptacle. So, Yeah, and that was, that was a story that I was going to get to, and I'll, I'll try to keep it short. But I went out and looked at a project. Well, I fitted the project before I went out and looked at it. It was a um, laundry room remodel, bath mm-hmm. remodel, and main or upstairs closet remodel. I just had it today. And I, I didn't even look at the panel. So I go in before bidding this job. So I go there and I look at the panel and it's a GE panel with all slim breakers. I think mm. there was maybe one two pull 20 that was full size. And when I say slim, the slim breakers are half size. So they fit in the panels that are acceptable for the half size breakers. So it might be like a 12, 24, meaning 12 full size breakers or 24 small breakers. Well, this one was, I believe it was a, probably like a 1224 for the outside, 100 amp main. Mm-hmm. And and so I'm looking at this and I go, okay, well, I have the two pull 20, which is which is fine. I can slim that down and I can, I can free up two spots and just rearrange. On the 2017, I was okay with putting a two pull 30 slim in there, but I'm not okay with doing that now. And they don't make a, as I know, as, as right now, they don't make a, to uh, a 30 amp receptacle gfci protection like like the actual you know like a like a the receptacle itself yeah receptacle itself so you have no to you're gonna have to do breaker. it at the breaker you have to do it at a breaker. well what happens now i say okay well now you need either a panel upgrade which is going to probably cost you about four grand or we can put a remote distribution which we call a subby bra down subby bra. <laughs> told bra. you i was gonna get that in subby bra all right, only and in so, Colorado. Right. It's, and so going. we had to do that. I had to get with the contractor and actually write him up a, a proposal of either one, give the customer that option. And so we ended up putting a, a panel down in the basement. And I was actually able to use that slim spot. I freed up that two pull 20 to free up two slim spots. I put a slim two pull 50 to feed my re- remote distribution panel. And then from there, I, I fed my dryer with a two pull 30 GFCI. So. Hmm. It, it, it's it's a big game changer. This this two ten dot eight a adding that two fifty volts is huge. Um, mm-hmm. And I know we're not going to cover all the topics, but I don't see I don't see the use or the popular twenty forty all in ones panels being used anymore. They're going to have to up their game if you're going to an all in one unless unless you're using a panel a twenty forty and then doing another panel right next to it. Um, you're going to start seeing meters piping over to either 30, 60, or 40, 80, or something of that sort to feed the whole dwelling. Hmm. There you go. Um, also, we want to give a shout-out again because we, we haven't been. We wanted to thank the people that are following along over in the actual video here. Uh, again, Caleb, Tim, thanks for coming. Coach Strong. Coach Strong, baby. O, uh, Estrada, and uh, Bill, thank you all for joining us over on the actual up, live Bill? stream. All right, so the next thing we look at is one real important aspect here, and this is the exceptions. Now, this exception is the exception, uh, and the reason it's where it's at in the code, if you look at under laundry area, the reason it's there, because these are exceptions that apply to either 1 through 10. There is no exception to 11. It applies to either 1 through 10 as directed in this exception. So now, in 1 through 3, that's 1, 2, and 3, 5 through 8, Eight, I believe that's eight. I can't tell. You might want to be able yeah, to look for me. Eight. eight, it's blurry on my screen. Five through eight and ten, you do have an exception. But notice there's no exception for nine. There's no exception for four. Right? Make it real yep. clear. No exception for those. Now, here's what the exceptions talk about. It says listed lockable support and mounting receptacle utilized in combination with compatible attachment fitting installed for the purpose of serving a ceiling luminaire or ceiling fan shall not be required to be ground fault circuit interrupter protected. If the general purpose convenience receptacle is integral to the ceiling luminaire or ceiling fan, 
then it needs to be GS or protected. Okay, so let me give you a picture of what we're talking about. These are those newer devices that actually is a male and a female mating piece. One acts like a receptacle. It mounts up into the ceiling box, okay? And, and you take the other piece, which the, it, you actually taste the assembly, uh, and that actually mounts and, and it pushes up into the actual device, so it's a mating system, okay? And it supports the weight. Now, since this is theoretically the part that gets hardwired in, um, and it's neat because you don't have to wire the luminaires or the fans anymore. You just wire the receptacle, put it in the box, and make sure you obviously have the box that can support the weight and meet all those rules. But now, you just take this piece that mounts onto the fan or to the light box, and it has little blades on it, and it mates together. Now, because that is a receptacle up in the ceiling, you don't have to GFCI it because of this allowance, because it's designed to mate with the attachment fitting. Okay. Now, the only thing about this that it gets kind of screwy is if you happen to have one of those that actually has a receptacle that's built in to the portion that is dealing with the light or integral to the light or the ceiling fan or whatnot, if that was a receptacle that somebody could actually get to, then it's still right. a receptacle and needs GFCI protection. And the only way you're going to do that is a breaker because they don't make those integral. Okay, so all this is saying is if you have the two mating components, this is theoretically a receptacle. You don't have to GFCI protect that because it's really only going to have the fan or the, or the luminaire connected to it. Unless, again, there's an integral receptacle on it. Now, to make it clear what people know this, you've all stayed at a hotel. You've all seen a lamp that's sitting on a table, and the lamp has a receptacle built into it. Now, it never works because it's always so flimsy and everything you plug into it just jiggles around, but it's there. That's an integral receptacle. Yeah. That's what we're talking about for the luminaire or the fan. If one of those are built into it in these locations here, that then you would have to have protection, GFCI protection. The exception uh, uh. is all these places if you have uh. the two pieces and it does not have a receptacle that's integral to it. And I'm going to be honest with you, Jay, I've never seen a, a, a luminaire that mounts like that or a ceiling fan that mounts like that that actually has an integral receptacle. They don't. The, the, the only ones I've seen actually are the keylesses, the keyless um, um, light fixture that goes up and it holds just an A19 bulb that you can thread into it and off to the side. It does have a two prong. But, um, but, that, but that wouldn't be using this mating system. That's just cases, right. and you're gonna screw it. In. This is this is all has to do with that specific type of mating system. Okay. So and again, it's it's a unique system that that you would use. So, in in your case, if you did put that type of keyless in one of these areas, then you'd have to GFCI protect it anyway because it has the receptacle on it. So you still have the receptacle rule. Okay, so this which, is which not we, requiring you to do it because it's two mated pieces. There's a luminaire at the bottom and the receptacle, and they mate together. There's yeah, nothing yeah. for you to plug a cord in, so it doesn't have to be GFC protected. Makes sense? Makes All right. Sense. And then 11, indoor damp and wet locations, new for the 2020 code. Obviously, it's good for wet locations, uh, outdoor locations that indoor damp or wet if it's intended to be a damp, it could be a dog wash station built into your house. You got a nice house. You yeah. got a dog wash. You got uh, the big argument right now is a mud room. If it's a mud room, is it a damp or wet location? Um, I'm going to tell you, I don't think it is unless they put a a faucet or something there that they can spray something down. And then I'm, I'm going to say then it could be a damp or wet location. And the good news here is it covers both. It doesn't make us guess. Is it damp or is it wet? It doesn't matter because it covers both damp and wet. But again, if it's just a mud room that you come into a house and it's tiled or whatnot, if it doesn't have sink there or a spigot or something to wash up in there, then I'd be hard pressed to call that a damp or wet location at all. So yeah. it's, we, got a floor, have, it's got a floor drain and, 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 and the faucets and all. And yes, it's probably a damp or wet location. You see a lot of dog washes here. I, I see a lot of big houses that they have those dog washes, and a lot of times they are in the mud room, right off the exterior door to walk outside. So you bring your pup in, mm -hmm. maybe to the right. You have, and some of these dog washes are bigger than my shower. Mm -hmm. I kid you. Not. I mean, they're huge. These dogs, these dogs are living good in Colorado. So mm -hmm. 
but I, I do like that rule and, and that clarity of it because some people would say, okay, well, it's it's not a sink, so it, anything within six feet or inspectors say, okay, within six feet, you have to put a GFI of that dog wash, and now it's saying the whole, pretty much the whole room mm -hmm. is, is what I'm getting. So anything inside that room that that dog wash is in is GFCI protected. So I like the clarity of that. I like that they added that in there. Yeah. All right, real quick, let's cover 210.8B, other than dwelling units, so we can we okay. can cover this, uh, because it's all generally the same locations, uh, with a little bit different, but it's it generally all same locations. What's most important about this is that it says all 125 volt through 250 volt receptacles supplied by single phase brand circuits rated 150 volts or less to ground, and also I just remind people, 240 volt circuit, you take in one leg to ground, it's 120. So it's going to fall under this 150 volts or less to ground. Okay. Phase to phase, it's 240. But we're asking here is phase to ground. And typically on a 240 volt circuit, it's 150 volts or less. Okay. And a, uh, now, why is that important? Because it also picks up three phase now. So it right. says, 125 volt through 250 volt receptacles supplied by a single phase brand circuit rated 150 volts or less to ground, 50 amperes or less. So again, it's going to cover all that are 50 amperes and less. So that's that big umbrella here, 50 amps or less. And those that are 125 through 250 volt. Okay. Then it says, and all receptacles supplied by three phase brand circuits rated 150 volts or less to ground, which is obviously going to cover 120 to uh, 208 applications, okay, because it'd be 120 to ground, so it's going to be within that 150. Uh, not going to cover 277, 480s, uh, because 277 to ground is going to exceed 150 volts, so not picking those up in this rule here. Um, now, the other thing is... In the single phase, it was 50 amperes or less was kind of the, the amperage trigger. For the three phase, it's 100 amperes or less. Mm. Okay, so that is huge. Um, if you're doing commercial buildings and it's uh, 12208, which is probably the more predominant, which you'd get in light commercial applications. Again, anything 100 amps or less in these areas, it's going to be fed by 120, say from a 12208 panel. Again, it just, it's just going to be GFCI protection requirements, okay? Um, so anything, nothing earth-shattering when it comes to that part of it, but that was, that was kind of a change that's, that took place in the 2017 code, and it just carried over and a little bit of, of clarification here uh, in the 2020. Now, this applies to your bathrooms, no different. Although, interesting enough, other than dwellings, commercial locations don't require receptacles in bathrooms. There's no rule that requires it. But if you put it in there, GFCI protected. Kitchens. Now, what is interesting in this change was it says kitchens. And we know what a kitchen is. It had permanent provisions for cooking, okay, and, and for food preparation. Well, what about, let's say, an area, Jay, in an office that didn't have permanent provisions for cooking, but they did for food prep. And all of those that you have in offices, maybe a break room might qualify. So kitchens yeah. or areas with a sink and permanent provisions for either food preparation or cooking. So most break rooms are gonna have room for food preparation and they're gonna have a sink. They might not have cooking, uh, and at least it's not permanent provisions for cooking. Interesting enough, a microwave that plugs into a cord and plug, I do not consider permanent. If you take a microwave and you run a, a branch circuit to it and you hardwire it and you frame it out and you put it in a room, I'm calling that permanent provisions. Okay? It's right. hardwired. Okay? So, again, you can look at it how you want, but if it's cord and plug, not permanent. But either way, it kind of makes it kind of a mood issue now because – you're going to have room for food preparation. If you got a sink, you're going to have countertop, right? All right. It's food preparation. So with that said, that means it's going to GFCI protection in there. Um, rooftops. So here's what yours came in. It says rooftops in other than dwellings, GFCI protection exception. Receptacles on rooftops shall not be required to be readily accessible other than from the rooftop. So this picks up your question that you had when we started, 
And you said, what about that receptacle? Does it have to be readily accessible from the grade? And remember I said, no, it's got to be GFCI protected. But the reason it's an exception is because the general rule in 210.8 says it has to be readily accessible. Here it's saying it's got to be readily accessible, but only from the rooftop location. Okay? So that's where that came in to allow you to be able to get away from that readily accessible application. It only needs to be readily accessible from those that actually need ready access. And that's right Makes at sense. the unit. Uh, outdoors, uh, receptacles outdoors are going to require uh, GFCI protection. Nothing really new here with that one. Uh, but you do have some exceptions here. Number one exception says, ex number one exception to three and four. So this applies to rooftops and outdoor receptacles. It says receptacles that are not readily accessible and it's supplied by a brand circuit dedicated, again, to electric snow melting, uh, de-icing, pipeline, and vessel heating shall be permitted to be installed in accordance with 426.28 and 427.22. So they have their own rules there that you would follow for that. And again, more often than not, that's going to be the allowance to have GFI protection and not GFCI protection. Okay, so they have different rules there that you can follow. Uh, we won't look at those tonight. <laughs> Surprise, um, they didn't just say refer exception number one, two, three, and four, refer to, and then back over to the to the dwelling unit. But because yeah. I know the code does that sometimes. But yeah, anyway. sometimes, you know, but they want the, the you know, the other than dwellings, they, they, they like to, even though it's keep a lot separate. of regurgitation, yeah, it's a lot of regurgitation, but they, they, they kind of keep it separate. And, of course, when this one, there's an exception to number four directly for outdoors, and that is in industrial establishments only, where conditions of maintenance and supervision ensure that only qualified persons, and we have a, we have a definition for what a qualified person is, are involved and assured equipment grounding conductor program as specified in 590.6B2, and that it requires you to test it and to do something called assured equipment ground, and you test it each time for surety. You can follow that rules. 590 is under temporary applications, but allows you, as long as you follow those, that type of procedure, then you can do that. And again, that's the exception to not have to have GFCI on that, okay? So again, uh, that's an exception to the general rule. Now, number five, sinks. Yep. Where receptacles are installed within six feet, the top inside edge of the bowl of the sink. So that's very much the same. Uh, the, there's two exceptions here. First exception says, okay, first one to number five is in industrial laboratories. You know, maybe labs where they do testing, chemical testing. Maybe they're doing COVID-19 testing or something like that. Um, in, so in industrial laboratories, receptacles used to supply equipment where removal of power would introduce a greater hazard shall be permitted to be installed without GFCI. So whatever they're working on, if it's a greater hazard, the chance that it could trip out and cause some kind of chain reaction, then just don't put the GFCI on there, period, so you don't risk it so you have constant power. So if there's some risk that a GFCI going off or malfunctioning or something could raise the level of a hazard, then you just get to say, screw it. I don't, I don't need it. Okay, so that's the first one. That only applies to industrial laboratories. So the second one has every much to do with healthcare facilities. And what this one says is receptacles located in patient bed locations of category two, which is general care, or category one, which is critical care locations or spaces of healthcare facilities shall be permitted to comply with 517.21. Of course, 517.21, we can click that, and that ends up talking about receptacles shall not be required in bathrooms or toilet rooms. And again, this 99 is from a healthcare code. It says receptacles located in patient bed, uh, bathrooms and toilet rooms in category two, which is the general care spaces, shall have ground fault circuit interrupter protection in accordance with 210.8B1. So again, that's telling you what you have to do specifically when it comes to a healthcare facility, whether it's category two or category one. So if you're dealing with those air locations, this is where it's gonna end up sending you. And so you follow the rules here, okay? And ultimately it's gonna tell you when or when you don't need GFCI protection, okay? 
And let's see if I'm back where I was at. Okay. And so, did you have a question? No, no. I was just saying we're on six. Six. Indoor six. damp and wet locations. Again, picking up the damp because it used to be indoor wet. Made sense. You know, like spray booths or spray down areas or even in restaurants where they have areas where they come in and they spray everything down. Granted, it's a kitchen anyway, but they might have a separate space off to the side or whatever that's a spray down area. And somebody could argue, well, that's not a kitchen. That's not part of the kitchen. Okay. But it is an indoor wet location, but it could be an indoor damp location. And it's going to require the GFCI protection now. Uh, number seven is dealing with locker rooms and with associated shower facilities. What do we mean by that, Jay? That means we have a locker room and immediately adjacent it or associated with it is actual showering facilities. If the locker room was somewhere separate that didn't have showers adjacent to it or associated with it, just separate locker room, then it wouldn't be required to have GFCI protection in a locker room. It only applies to locker rooms right. that are associated with the showering facility. Okay. Uh, if we have locker rooms, for example, at my office, they have nothing to do with the shower facility. It's just a place that you can go in and, for a workout area that you can put your cl some clothes in if you want. Okay. Showers are somewhere else. So again, it's not associated with it. Uh, number eight, garage, accessory buildings, service bays, and similar areas other than vehicle exhibition halls and showrooms. So garages, Commercial garages kind of very broadly covers here. Uh, accessory buildings, maybe a building that is um, an accessory to the main building. Uh, that's new here. It wasn't in there before. So you could have a building out back that you store stuff in. That's your accessory building to your commercial building or other than dwelling building. Then you're going to have GFCI protection in there. Service bays um, and similar areas. The vehicle exhibition halls, that's like a dealership showroom out in the front where they just show vehicles, not going to be required to have GFCI for those. N not at all. Okay. So that's what it's talking there. And in showrooms. So if say I had a, 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 a lawn, a lawnmower uh, business and I had a showroom out there with all that stuff that wouldn't require any of those to be GFCI protected. However, you go through the opening and you go into the back area where they do servicing or similar, where they do that, then, then all of a sudden this is going to kick in, and now I need GFCI protection. Obviously, they're working with tools and things like that, equipment, okay? And so they need that extra level of protection to work with it. Uh, crawl spaces, same, at or below, doesn't matter. Uh, Ten, um, interesting. We remove the unfinished out of the one and two, um, the uh, dwelling applications in 210.8a. Well, they did not do that in 210.8b. It still says unfinished areas of basements. So commercial basements, the unfinished areas are going to require GFCI protection. Again, whether it's single phase or three phase, single phase 50 amps or less, three phase 100 amps or less, both of which 150 volts or less to ground. Okay? So in those applications... We're going to have to have the GFCI protection in those unfinished uh, basements. Now, to be honest with you, I'd prefer that to be the same way it is over in the dwelling and not need it for, uh, for finished areas, only the unfinished. Uh, I think that your basements in Colorado, I am pretty sure that they waterproof their basements pretty darn yes. good, that they don't flood. They, they do it all the time. There's specialty contractors that, that will come through and waterproof them themselves, and that's that's all they do, whether they're finished or unfinished. Even if they're unfinished, they waterproof them. So we're, we, we don't really have too many issues with receptacles on or above ground level on the ba or above you know the bottom portion of the basement. Usually basements don't flood here is what I'm saying. But, yeah. again, we have to adjust to the code, so we did. And as of August 1st here in – Colorado if your permits pulled and some jurisdictions are on the 2017 and some are even still on the 2014 I myself I don't have a list of those jurisdictions I just go by the 2020 code now yeah and, and obviously it. it's going to be you know more restrictive in the 2020 so in areas that you wouldn't be required to do it if you put it in you're just going over and above code anyway so 
you're not going to hurt anything. So yeah, instead of trying to learn all those areas, just go with the latest code and just and and do it. And, and so so in this case, yeah. So in this case, unfinished basement areas of basements and commercial. Now we add the exception. This is exactly the same, so I won't regurgitate it as the other one exception yes. to one through five. Now this is different because this one also picks up four. So this is one through five. Uh, it doesn't include six and seven. But it does include 8, and it does include 10. And again, that's the mating system for the receptacle that goes up in a box. It obviously, you know, it goes without saying, if it's a fan box, that box has got to be, and of course in 314, it's got to be able to support a ceiling fan. So it's got to meet those rules. So this device mounts into it, and it's a receptacle. And then again, you have what's called the attachment fitting that mounts onto the Luminera fan, and they literally just click together. So for the electrician, I don't have to do any wiring between them. I wire the receptacle, and then I put the attachment fitting on the fan or the luminaire, and then it's got a little tail in it, and there's a little hole up on the device, and it literally has rings of, like, receptacle prongs that they mate together, and it just snaps in, and it supports the weight. It's designed to do that. Okay? What is, so it's what, pretty neat. Bill has a question. He says, so if it's finished... Would we refer back to 210.8A2? No, so, so Bill, we're looking at B. B is other than dwelling units, so it's never going to refer back to A. It's B. Right. It's in They're other two than. Two separate. Two separate, separate things. So A is dealing all with uh, dwelling applications. B is everything to do with other than dwelling applications. So if it's other than dwelling... The, the finished areas of a basement of an other than dwelling doesn't need GFCI protection. Only the unfinished areas. If it's a dwelling, different story. In a dwelling, GFCI protection, whether it's finished or unfinished. Yeah. There's two ways this is going to go in 2023. Either 210.8A is going to drop back to unfinished, which I have a public input for, or... 210.8B is going to change change from unfinished areas of basements to just basements. We'll see how that all works out. Okay? I guess my argument is if you're worried about killing somebody in a dwelling, why aren't you worried about the same individuals in an other than a dwelling unit? It's the same basement. You made all these other changes in the code, wet and damp, to harmonize between A and B, why should this be any different? All right. So we'll see what happens. Um, uh, next one is laundry area. Again, this is, this one's going to apply to things like laundromats and laundry areas in commercial buildings. Maybe you have a multifamily building that has a separate laundry facility or room. All of that's going to come into play in laundry areas. So again, GSCI protection, big impact here. All the dryers, all the receptacles are going to be GFCI protected. Okay. So no big more impact. slim breakers, no more <laughs> slimmies. All right. Good so luck that's... trying to find a uh, trying to find a GFI right now. You have to they're hard to find, man. I, I had to go to three different supply houses today to find that two pole thirty for that dryer I was referring back to when we were talking about residential applications. I actually had CES who hopefully we get a rep rep on here in the next few weeks to, to talk to talk to us about the um, supply and demand that they're they're struggling with, but um, one of my buddies Dan over at CES, he actually brought it to me. He's, uh, he says, "Man, I'm getting off at 12." I said, "Well, I'm not going to make it over there by 12." He says, "You know what, Jay? Man, I'll bring it to you. Give me the address." I said, "Well, why is it, since you're bringing that, why don't you bring this, 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 and a and, and a burrito, burrito and a soda too?" But uh, um, they, you, it's hard to find. Did yeah, you did he, you did you did you look? Did you tell him that you were the basement king? I, I mean, he's, uh, he already knows, man. I don't have to tell him. Come on, guys. <laughs> All right. Let us let me go on here. While we're, while we're yep. doing it, we might as well make this an extended episode of Electrician Live for those that want to continue to listen on. Let's cover 210.8C. This is crawl space lighting outlets. So this is uh, something that came in last cycle. And what it is is it was a result of a death. So what happened was somebody was in a crawl space. They hit a lighting outlet. 
Uh, it had a lamp in it with a bulb, but we, they're called lamps. They're not really light bulbs, but it's a lamp. But anyway, you know, Thomas Edison would differ with me. But at the end of the day, he's dead, and I'm not yet. So we'll, we'll go with me. It's a lamp. And it got damaged, and the elements was the filament was still sticking down, and somebody came in contact with it. And no quicker sure. way to get something in the code is to die. Okay, I'm just saying, don't do that. But that's how you, you know, that's how I got in the code very really quickly. It didn't take a bunch of cycles for it to happen. It happened pretty quickly, um, and it just says GFCI protection shall be provided for lighting outlets uh, not exceeding 120 volts installed in crawl space. So again. This is not a rule that's to commercial or to residential. This is specifically, this is to both. Um, and again, this is not going to apply to 277. Okay, this is 120 volt installed in a crawl space. Okay, so it's very much volted limited. Uh, the next is 210.8D, uh, which used to incidentally be something about dishwashers. Okay. Uh, that got relocated at back up to uh, 422.5. So there's a list of GFCI requirements up there. Jay, I think we're probably going to have to do a GFCI part two, or that'll be under appliances episode. But just so you know, there are GFCI requirements up in 422, which is dealing with appliances. And what it says is specific appliances. It says, unless GFCI, GFCI protection is provided in accordance with 422.5 B3 through B3, uh, B3 through B5, which incidentally has its own GFCI requirements up there and what's got to be protected. This is saying unless it's already provided by those provisions in 422.5 B3 through B5, the outlets supplying the appliances specified in 422.5 A shall be GFCI protected in accordance with 422.5 B1 or B2. Now, a lot of people have said, why the heck is it right here if it's telling you everything is in 422? That's because 210.8D is a liaison to 422.5. So there is detailed requirements for the different appliances like dishwashers. And now it applies to all dishwashers, not just residential, but commercial. So by moving it, all the things. So up there, it's also... Um, um, well, you know what, Jay? Let's look at it just so Let's we can we yeah, can look, look at it. Caleb Here, says you're uplifting the competition. <laughs> oh, they're gonna need more than more than me preaching to them to get to to this level, Caleb. So, so yeah. we're trying to help them out. Yeah. So here's all the requirements for appliances that have to be GFCI protected. Okay. Pull this thing up. So this is. Automotive uh, vacuum machines, drinking water coolers, and bottle fill stations, um, cord and plug connected high pressure spray washing machines, um, tire inflation machines, vending machines, sump pumps in general, and dishwashers. Now, it doesn't matter whether it's commercial, or residential, other than dwelling, it doesn't matter. So, all of these are the locations that require. GFCI protections. And the only reason that 210.8D is saying to look here is because these are the appliances that are listed that require GFCI protection. Okay. That's why it's doing it. Now, when you see that's referencing that, but then you say, well, what was this B about? Well, this is where it's giving you the options of how to GFCI protect it. Okay. I can do it within the branch circuit over current device. I can do it by a device or outlet within the supply cord. I can do it as part of an integral part of the attachment plug. So it's built into the plug at the end. It could be built into it. Uh, some appliances will come with it built into it. Um, it can be within the supply cord, uh, not more than 12 inches from the attachment plug. Very common for vending machines to have it built in to the end. It's kind of like the cord. You have the plug and then you have some cord and then you have this built in GFCI. And that's what it's talking about. It's built into the cord. Uh, and then, of course, you have the option for a factory installed within the appliance. So they can actually build GFCI directly into the appliance. Okay? So that's what it's talking about when it says that unless GFCI is provided in accordance with 422.5B3 through B5, then it's just saying 
you're going to have to have the GF tire protection, and it's just going to send you to 422. And you just need to look at the appliances and then look at the options you have to GFCI protect it. Okay? And that's all it did for that. Um, and also, it, it, it says the same thing down here, where appliances is a vending machine as specified in 422.5A5, which we looked at. The GFCI protection is not provided in accordance with 422.5B3 or B4, which is either in the attachment plug or in the cord. If that's not the case, then I have to install GFCI using one of these two options, B1 or B2. And you remember B1 is with, at an overcurrent device or B2 was at the actual device would be the receptacle, right? So again, it's saying, gives me options here to do that, okay? Uh, 210.8E, equipment requiring servicing. So GFCI protection shall be provided for the receptacle required by 210.63. Now 210.63, that is the receptacle that's required for servicing applications, okay? So for your air conditioning unit, outside, all that, that's the service receptacle. That's the main requirement for that, okay? So I don't want to get any deeper than that because I am running out of time. Let's go back. So anywhere that you'd have a receptacle that's required for servicing, for example, within 25 feet. Yep. Uh, of course, if it's outdoors, it's GFCI protected anyway. It's outdoors, right? right? Um, there is receptacle requirements if you have a dedicated space for a piece of equipment that would require a receptacle for servicing in that dedicated space. That would be GFCI protected because it's under 210.8E, which is making reference to 210.63, and that's going to talk about that receptacle. And trust me, if the receptacle is under 210.63, then you're going to GFCI protect it because this tells you that you are. Sure. The next one is 210.8F. Now, 210.8F came as a result, again, of a death. Now, what's interesting about this is it says outdoor outlets. Don't get it confused with a receptacle. This could be hardwired. This could be a disconnect where you're actually going from it down to an air conditioning unit. Okay, that's an outlet, a point where you take power. Okay, outlets are not receptacles. An outlet is the point where you take power. Now, a receptacle outlet is a receptacle device that goes inside of an outlet box. Right. Okay? So it's still a device, and it goes in the outlet box. Okay? It's a point where you're taking power from. So we'll call it receptacle outlet, but we call devices just receptacles or switches. Okay? So, again, terminologies are key here. But in this case, it says all. And this is new. You see the little in here. That lets you know also, for those that didn't know it, these are totally new. And, again, this is just a restructuring but all these are new. It says all outdoor outlets for dwellings, other than, now this only applies to dwellings now, other than those covered in 210.8A3, exception to three, that are supplied by single phase branch circuits rated 150 volts to ground or less, 50 amps or less, shall have ground fault circuit interrupter protection for personnel. So, Jay. What is this going to impact? Well, A3 was the outdoor. Okay? That requires AF that requires GFCI protection anyway, right? Yep. Okay? And so we don't need to don't need to talk about those again cuz they're already covered in 210.83 and that's why it says other than those covered by that because that's all outdoor, okay? Receptacles have to be GFCI protected. So now we're talking about outdoor outlets. So we're talking about, Jay, we're talking about the disconnect is the point where, where it goes down to the actual air conditioning unit. Yeah. That means that circuit's going to require GFCI protection. And you're not going to do that by receptacle because that's all hardwire. So you're going to have to put a GFCI receptacle back in the panel. So there's probably a real important question that you might want to ask me when it comes to things like, Two well, yeah, breakers and GFCIs. Well, so I was actually asked this the other day in the supply house, and 
I kind of had a decent answer, but a guy comes up to me because I was buying a two pull twenty GFCI breaker for an AC unit that I'm putting in, and he goes, "Well, how in the world does that? Since the AC doesn't require a neutral on most of them, but you have the neutral pigtail that goes into the neutral bar, how how does a GFCI work? And um, I guess that's my question to you. How would that work? Because when I pull an AC wire, I'm re phasing that neutral conductor, that white conductor as a hot. So now that turns essentially kind of like into my red, you know, my A and my B phase, mm -hmm. black being A, red and being it, B. And, it, and in cables, you're allowed to do that. You're allowed to re identify in a cable. So if it's a cable you're running, then you can re-identify. If you're doing it in flex or something like that from the disconnect down, and you don't have that option. You got to pull the colors that you're going to use. You can't re-identify a white in a flex. Okay. Uh, you can only do it in a cable. Okay. Of course, you can't use NMB outside anyway, so you're not going to sleeve NMB inside of that. I know nobody does that, but um, you can't re-identify it in that case. So we're talking air conditioning unit. Let's just keep it that. So you got a black and a red. It's going to go down. You got your equipment ground. It's going to go down to the unit. And you've got your, you got your disconnect. Now, you could run from the panel, say, I don't know, say whatever size you is. You could say a, a 10 2 with ground. You're say you're running that yep. over to the, um. the actual disconnect. And again, the disconnects are going straight in the back of it. Some people argue that that's N and B still in a wet location. I will tell you the rating of the equipment, if it's a waterproof disconnect and you go in with the proper fitting in the back, you're fine. And you go into the back of it. All right, so you're in there. Let's use that hypothetical. Then you are going to take that white, and you are going to wrap it with black tape. And you only need to go around it and circle it. You don't need to wrap the whole thing. Okay, people do that. They wrap the whole thing and go through a roll of tape. Just one, one circle at the termination is all that's necessarily required. Uh, and to differentiate it from no longer being used as a grounded neutral conductor. It's now being used as a phase conductor. Okay, so that's allowed to do that and very common. We do it water heaters all the time. You run a 10 2 to the water heater and you take the white and you wrap it with uh, black tape or red tape or whatever you want to do. Um, the reason that the GFCIs work is because you're still going to be required to use the GFCI at the main panel and you still got your piggly wiggly, you still got your neutral. You're going to take that, you still got to connect that to the neutral bus. Okay? So it's still going to work. You still got your alternating current, you still have the phases. What happens is if there, for some reason there's leakage current, then you don't have enough current coming back through and it still gets over and it can be able to detect that because again, back and forth, all current is still a sensing, a current sensing uh, transformer in there. It's still gonna detect any type of leakage current. So they do work as long as on the line side of that breaker, you do connect it to the neutral bus. Not necessary on the load side for those. Check with your manufacturer on all breakers, just to make sure, because not all are created equal. Just sure. saying that. Just double check. But typically, you know, like Square D's, most of their type of thing, I know you're a Cutler Hammer guy, but most of the Square D's will work and function that way up to about 50 amps. 50 amps and less, fine. Anything over 50 amps, you can be very careful with how it operates. Just check with your manufacturer. Because you know, hot tubs and spas might need a 60 amp breaker. And if you don't check with the manufacturer, you might be shocked that the only way you're going to be able to utilize this is if you take a neutral on the load side of that breaker. But it's not going to do you any good if the, if the actual hot tub doesn't have a need for a neutral conductor. Okay. Most of them do. They got a light in it and everything like that. But for the I'm hot just tub, saying. Yeah. yeah. So, but just you, things you got to think about. But yes, typically, as long as you connect that piggly wiggly over to the actual neutral bus, you're all right, and everything on the load side of it's still going to be GFCI protected. You could be okay. Um, the AC manufacturers are going to have to structure their maximum disconnects to a, a standard common size because some of those ACs are kind of getting off topic with this. Well, this these are dwellings. I don't, I don't know a lot of dwelling unit, individual units, even a five-ton that's going to be over 50 amps. Remember this. Well, is no, no, no. What, 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 what? I guess what I'm saying is, is sometimes they'll do a minimum 30, maximum 35, minimum 40, maximum 45. So, or, 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 you know, 20 to 35. They sometimes they fluctuate, and there's no, you know, as I know, there's no 
Well, we, what we've got is on the nameplate, you'll have a, a maximum overcurrent device, minimum circuit ampacity. Correct. So that one's for the conductors and one's for the device. So it'll be 25 amps maximum circuit, uh, minimum circuit ampacity, 25 amps, maximum overcurrent device, 50 amps. And people freak out. They're like, <laughs> yeah. no, I am not putting a 10 or a 12 on a 50 amp breaker. And you, you can. Yes, you can. The code allows it. says it, it right there. And 240.4, it, it, it gives you that allowance. It tells you when you can use tables uh, that, that allow you that. Same thing happens to motors all the time. So people freak out. Just follow what it says on the nameplate. One day maybe we'll do an episode where I'll explain how, to, how the nameplate is derived from the rules in the code. Um, but at the end of the day, it's all okay. But since this is only for dwellings, probably not going to be a problem finding the device but, you know, Jay, this does add costs that people have to think about, you know, that you didn't have to have before. Now, people say you can't put a price on safety, I guess. But I don't know if you, you know, good news is we know GFCIs work. So, yeah. So, you know. <laughs> what did Caleb say? Caleb yeah, said to this, to this day, Paul has many <laughs> buckets in his basement. A lot of skeletons man. in the basement, too, Caleb. Caleb right. is on a roll tonight, man. What is you doing, Caleb? You just must be hanging out and throwing one back or something, man. Here's Caleb. Here's Caleb. Yeah. Get right. him, Caleb. Get him. All right. Actually, that's all we're going to talk about tonight, Jay, when it comes to GFCIs. Uh, again, hours well, ago. Well, hold on. There, there, there was that exception, though, for, for oh. uh, F, where it says exception. Ground fault circuit interrupter protection shall not be required on lighting outlets other than those covered in 210.8C. So other than your crawl space lighting. So if you have an yeah. outdoor fixture, maybe it's your walkout patio on the front um, or back of your house, that light itself does not have to be GFCI protected. And I was a little right. kind of worried about that, too, because I didn't see that exception when I was reading the code. And I'm, I'm trying to think about how I'm going to, again, put this put these pieces to the puzzle and um i'm glad that that exception is clear for um outdoor outlets sorry i flipped yeah. my page but yeah outdoor lighting outlets outdoor lighting outlets yep. yeah well outdoor outlets receptacles are already covered in our general rule so and that's covered in a and b so they both covered there so this is purely lighting outlets where we would put luminaires on it and everything like that so again other than that, it's in a crawl space, which again, no exception to that rule. GFCI protection, again, that result of a, of a death. It's kind of funny that, well, not funny. I shouldn't say it that way. That 210.8C for the crawl space, for the lighting, was a result of a death. 210.8F was also the result of a death. A gentleman was leaning over an outdoor air conditioning unit and got electrocuted because he didn't have the working space, which takes us into the requirement of why people are putting disconnects behind air conditioning units. They need, if that's the first place that I'm going to test for voltage, if I'm a technician, it needs to have working clearance. Okay. 110.26, but people put them behind air conditioning units. This was a case. The guy was leaning over it to get to it. And unfortunately, uh, this one was also a result of an improperly wired unit anyway. So it was already installed incorrectly. It wasn't done by anybody I would think that has any type of license or anything like that. So, but at any rate, it resulted in a death and it got into the code and that's how it got there. All right. So Jay, there's so many other areas, folks, that we could cover with GFCIs. Again, 422.5, we could look at, at uh, 590, which is temporary applications with GFCI requirements. Um, there's just so much to cover and GFCIs, but we're going to leave it right there. I think it was a good show. I think we covered a lot of topics, had a lot of kind. Anything you want to, anything you want to add, Jay, to the that what we talked about? Not at all. I think no. we did good. I think we covered we it did. pretty good. We covered it pretty good. Covered pretty good topics, but a little teaser again for next week. Oh, giveaway, giveaways. Okay, giveaways. All right, so. 
What are we doing, Jay? Anybody that donates ten dollars sound comfortable? Sounds Too high? good. You want it higher? Sounds good. No, uh, come I mean, on. I'd, I'd like to add a zero to it. I'll take a take a hundo, but um, you know, just any donations. I, I guess we didn't even cover the the donations of these, but man, you are wearing a sweet, sweet mask. Mm-hmm. And you can't that see the good. logo. You can't see the logo on mine because his logo's green. See there? See how it's coming up? But you can see it on on Jay's. Uh, look at that, Jay. Mine's like that you can see good. me. You can see me through it. Boy, that's not going to stop any COVID. Look, it's got holes in it, folks. Well, it doesn't have <laughs> holes in it. You must. It's a green logo. I got yours. a green. I got green screen. Anyway. <laughs> so anyway, so in a donation, if you donate. Uh, you get that little symbol on the screen where you make a donation. Uh, if you donate ten dollars, or get, I'll send you one of these. We only got a limited, so again, if I run out of these and you donate, we're also sending you one of these screwdrivers as well for everybody that donates. Again, the more the better. Okay. Where's Rombo? I haven't seen Rombo <laughs> for for a couple weeks. You know, Rondo's in the Fast Tracks program now, but I haven't seen where he's done much in it. So I think Ron has been pretty bogged down with work and things. So I think he's uh, uh, he's going to get in it. I he's just, uh, you know, yeah. You know. But uh, I, I think he'll Rombo. be back at it. We miss you, man. Come back. Yeah, come back. Come back. Possible. Caleb's picking up some of the some of the chat, but Rombo, we we miss you, man. Come back. Yeah. Uh, Estrada also said that some of the AC units uh, will have GFCI in the cord. Absolutely. And oh, we'll yeah. have what's called LCDI as well, which is kind of like a leakage current detection type of concept uh, in it as well. Um, so sometimes it'll be a combination, that type of thing. See that a lot in the hair dryers that have the built in as well. Um, but uh, absolutely. Someone will definitely have it built into the cord. Some will have it in that in the, in the end plug head already built into it, okay? Just remember that when it comes to GFCI, there's other areas in the code that are going to um, kick in. 210.8 is just the general requirements that, that get you started. You have other areas uh, throughout the code that might kick in GFCI, okay? So again, GFCIs, they also work in applications. I guess I covered this, Jay. If you're doing a retrofit for a bathroom and it does, have, does not have an equipment ground, the code gives you a provision to be able to put a GFCI receptacle on it, and you don't need an equipment ground in order to trip a GFCI. It's looking for imbalance between a hot and a neutral, okay? Leakage current, okay? Uh, which is the same concept for why it works on a 240-volt breaker. It, right. Even though it all changes current, it, it's alternating current, and it cycles. If there's a leakage, it sends back. You're not getting the same amount, so it detects a leakage. And, of course, the pigtail over to the neutral helps to identify it. So, again, you get this application. So, at the end of the day, you can use GFCIs. You don't need an equipment grounding conductor for them to work. Okay, but if you do use them for receptacle replacement, things like that, then you're going to have to put those little stickers on every receptacle downstream that does not have an equipment ground if it's protected by a GFCI, saying that there's no ground present GFCI protected. So the labels come with it. They're not just there for the pretty looks. You want to use them. Okay. Is, Got you. What's, now, what's O saying? Uh, let's say you guys said something see... about a Milwaukee inverter. I think O's a Milwaukee guy like I am. Oh, you're the man. We love Milwaukee stuff. And I'm gonna look that up. I haven't seen it. I actually haven't have seen not the inverter. Seen it. But I'm gonna I'm gonna Google it here soon. Once we get not... off, I'll probably Google it and if it's got call, something call to do with rep. Milwaukee. I'm your he's, guy. He's gonna get it or go look at it or do something. You know, you know, I just I just actually bought one of those tall lamps, um, or the lights, and, and I, I was rocking around with like the stereo size light, and I bought one of those um, long extended extender lights, about six feet tall. And we were doing a a panel replacement in a basement. We were kind of dropping it down. They did a big dig out, and we had to drop down the the panel down there. Man, that thing was awesome. I'll tell you what, that thing was pretty cool to have that those nice a big LED Milwaukee shining. light. 
Well, it's it's not huge. It's just more tall. You can just place it anywhere in the room, and and it goes up to about six feet high, and it has has a nice light shine on the on the head of it, and it disperses the light really well. So that was that was pretty nice of Milwaukee to come up with that. But um, yeah. All right. If and you're listening, Caleb, if you're listening, Ryobi, we need a light. We got to play the same game. Okay. Um, what else? Oh, Caleb says someone needs to put in a public input for the definition of an unfinished basement. I don't know. We that's been tried uh, for residential uh, for dwellings. There's no need because it's all basements now. Um, yeah. And I have a feeling that that's going to disappear anyway in the uh 2023 for the commercial anyway so it's not going to really matter um but it has been talked about a lot when it comes to unfinished basements so if it's an unfinished floor let's say it's just concrete that's become very in vogue now to do stained concrete so it has nothing to do with the covering um if this if it's framed up and it's got gypsum board on the walls then to me it's finished it, some people say, well, is it has a ceiling or not? I think it's irrelevant. If it's got finished walls, to me, that's a finished room. Because I could put a drop ceiling in it uh, or whatnot up there. And again, anybody were to do a definition, that it, they wanted to say a, a finished versus unfinished. What distinguishes an unfinished? For me, it would be one where the walls are open and they're not covered with gypsum board or paneling or something. Okay, to me, because what have we seen? And here's how I rule that for me. Uh, when I go into some places, it's very in vogue now to, to have open ceilings. It's very in vogue to have concrete floors. Yeah. But the walls are certainly going to be finished. So if you go into, a, let's think about a restaurant. Since we don't have to worry about dwellings anymore because it's all basements. Commercial one, unfinished. Maybe they're just, maybe they're doing a natural ceiling. Okay. Maybe they're going to show the rafters or the studs or whatever it is. It's a base. It's a basement anyway. So showing it. Um, and they're going to use concrete floor, but they're going to gypsum the walls. It's finished. To me, it's finished. Okay. Um, in order, since we don't have a definition of finished, unfinished, what is considered unfinished? I would say exposed walls. Yeah. Because you could, you could be on a third, third floor where then maybe they have a, um, AC or furnace on the third floor and of, of a residential dwelling. Um, I've seen it. I did a custom home not too long ago and they had the basement furnace and they had the third level furnace. And to me, if, if I'm walking into that furnace room and there's gypsum board on the side and that receptacle is in that wall that's covered by a gypsum board, mm -hmm. then I would say that that, you know, I would then just end up putting a normal device there. Um, even if it, even if the ceiling is open. Well, yeah, you wouldn't, because, you wouldn't, you wouldn't do that in the 2020 code because it's all basements, whether it's finished or. Well, no, no, no. I'm saying, I'm saying it's on the third level though. If, oh, if, if it's on the third level, that's just top, a receptacle. That's just a receptacle. Yeah. So mm -hmm. that's, uh, even if the, even if the, um, ceiling wasn't finished because sometimes there's duck lines running through there, mm -hmm. there'd be no way to finish yeah. that part. But if the side walls you know, have gypsy board or, you know, what we call it in the field drywall, then mm -hmm. to me, it's, um, it's finished as well, whether it's painted or not, or mudded or not, that, that doesn't matter to me. I, I no. don't, it's cosmetics, finished, you know? it's cosmetic, that type That's of thing. Cosmetic. Yeah. As long as I don't see the, the studs and framing, then I, I don't worry about the ceiling, that type of thing. I wouldn't think anybody would classify anything as being finished if you can see the studs in the walls. Um, yeah. but and some people would say, well, I don't consider it finished either. If I can see up and I can see open ceilings and things like that. Well, that's why you got to work with your HJ. But again, there's a reason we don't want a definition of an unfinished basement versus a finished because it allows it to be subjective to the inspector and the electrician to come to a meeting of the minds and say, you know, this is, this is the way they just want it. It's, it's still finished. Or if he doesn't want to do something, I guess he could try to convince him that, well, look, it doesn't have a ceiling. It's unfinished. Then the inspector's going to say, yeah, but it's got gypsum on the walls. It's finished, buddy. Hash it out. But if you want to, you know what? At any rate, I should say, Caleb, you can't submit a public input for 2023. It is over and done with. 
Yesterday, I believe is yesterday, was the last day to put any changes that you want in for the 2023 National Electrical Code. It's done. Now, once everybody put those in, now us that are on code panels are going to start looking at it in the next couple months. And then we're going to come out with what's called a first draft. And when we're done with that, you all get to read it. And if you sent some things in, you get to see if it made the grade or not. And then if you don't like what we did, then guess what? You now you then have another chance to do what's called a public comment. But you can only public comment on the things that we put in that first draft. So any new ideas that you have today, you're going to have to wait for now five more years for new ideas. Because you're going to have to wait until the 2026 cycle starts. Okay? So you had a timeline. We had about, what, five months, four months? We had a timeline to put in these public inputs, and it's, it's over with now. Now we're going to just be commenting and massaging everything that's been submitted to this point. And then we have our other stages that we'll go through. And then we'll dump on you the 2023 at the end of 2022. So we've got two years still that we're going to be working on it a little bit, a year and a half that we'll be working on it. And then it'll be ready. We're always adding new things to the code. New technology. We learn like that basement unfinished whenever we got to clean things up like that and all this kind I got, of things. I got buddies right now that, that hit me up that are like, they're like, man, do you, do you know the 2020 code? I'm like, yeah, man, I've had the book for, for a little bit now. I don't know it thoroughly, but I'm more involved now than ever. And they're like, okay, well, where can I buy one? <laughs> like, come on, man. Get your 2020 code, man. Come on. Get well, you know, you know, Jay would be more up on it. If he would get back in his fast tracks program, oh, I'm just saying. I know. I'm just saying. I'm just saying. I, I'm I'm glad that you gave us the 24 months on that one because I need it. I need you to extend my 24 months. <laughs> <laughs> Not stunned. That's all you get. That's no. it. You're done. No more code for you. <laughs> no more code for you. All right, all right, guys. Thank y'all for hanging in. We went. Wow, Jay. Two hour episode of Electrician Live. Hell, Dweller. Caleb, I'm the basement king. King. All right, guys. Well, look, I'm excited. Thank you. Great. It was a great show. Um, Next week, get excited. We're going to dig into AFCIs. And I'm going to share some information with you. And it's going to probably be controversial. Because I've been a big supporter of AFCIs for quite a few years. I've been on that stump. But uh, we're going to have to talk. Jay, we're going to have to have a talk. We're going to look at 210.12 next week. And if we happen to get through all that, maybe we'll pick up some more GFCI. But that's our topic, AFCIs next week. So, Jay, tell everybody bye. See you guys. Have a good week. Stay safe. And we're going to cut this thing out. All of you, we thank you. God bless. Take care. And we'll see you next week on Electrician Live. You're listening to Electrician Live with your host, Paul Abernathy and Jay Grunberg. Thank you.